we, uh, we, we've been talking a lot for the past few weeks with friends here in, in, in Paris. And, and, and some of them told me, well, you have to invite, invite the guys from Telecomics. And, and, and so I started looking at what these guys are. So I saw on my timeline that uh, they've been involved in the, the Arab Revolution, that they did a lot there, that that's that, uh, a kind of new organization. Uh, Jean-Marc, Jonathan, I hope that you'll have a few words telling what Telecomics is at some stage. So, and, and so to, to move on now, that we had Vincent, that we have some other kind of uh, uh, political commitments in some ways, social commitments from hackers, from, from, from geeks. Please welcome Jean-Marc and Jonathan. And then we're very pleased. Uh, Jonathan is coming from Sweden. Bonjour, je me présente Jean-Marc de Telecomics. En fait, je vais juste faire l'introduction et présenter euh, ce qu'est Telecomics en français. Jonathan euh, fera donc euh, le reste en anglais. OK. Euh, donc... Good. Non, merci. <rire> okay. Donc, Télécomique, c'est un regroupement d'activistes, euh, pas forcément de hackers, des gens qui ont, qui ont du, du savoir-faire, qui savent rédiger des articles, qui savent mettre en place différents systèmes. Euh, donc, je ne sais pas si vous, êtes, si vous êtes un petit peu au courant de ce qu'on a fait durant la censure euh, en Égypte, quand M. Moubarak s'est dit euh, « Tiens, euh, je vais couper Internet euh, ». Il a coupé Internet, mais il n'a pas coupé le téléphone. Ce qui euh, nous a permis, nous, Télécomics euh, et euh, FDN, qui est un, un fournisseur d'accès historique en France, French Data Network, de mettre euh, à disposition des numéros de téléphone pour les Égyptiens pour qu'ils puissent nous contacter euh, à la old school, comme on dit à l'ancienne, ça veut dire qu'ils utilisent leur téléphone, ils composaient le numéro, ils se connectaient par modem chez nous, sur nos, euh, ils se connectaient sur nos modems, et nous faisions une passerelle sur Internet, ce qui permettait de faire passer euh, divers euh, documents sur, euh, par exemple, hop, non, c'est pas trop ça, du tout. <rire> par exemple, ce qui nous a permis notamment de démarrer en même temps donc, un projet qu'on a appelé euh, Stress Enemy, qui est toujours hébergé par Télécomics. Télécomics, en fait, on héberge beaucoup de projets. Donc voilà, euh, quelqu'un a une idée, un projet qui est intéressant, qui est dans l'esprit de ce que nous faisons. Euh, on donne des ressources, on donne des outils. Donc on a lancé Stress Enemy. Stress Enemy, c'est euh, notre chère Barbara, en souvenir d'elle, qui, euh, qui avait voulu supprimer une photo d'elle dans la presse et ça avait donc fait un effet flambi. C'est-à-dire quand on écrase le flambi, ça en met partout sur le mur. Euh, Stress Enemy, c'est pareil. On coupe un blog. Nous, on le duplique. Donc, notamment Wikileaks, on, euh, Stress Enemy avait servi aussi de plateforme dessus. Euh, différents documents qui avaient été euh, supprimés sur différentes pages Facebook, etc. Euh, nous, nous donnons aussi tout un panel d'outils qui servent donc à contourner les censures, par exemple. Euh, et aussi de partager des connaissances au niveau euh, cryptologie ou petits outils sympathiques euh, qui permettent de surfer, euh, pas forcément anonymement, mais de manière sécurisée. Donc on a vraiment une approche euh, d'échange, de collaboration. Tout ça, c'est ouvert, n'importe qui peut venir participer, c'est vraiment l'esprit de Télécomics. Nous avons aussi forcément euh, Twitter, on aime bien, mais Twitter, c'est centralisé. 
C'est sympa, mais c'est pas très cool, quoi, parce qu'en fait, si Twitter.com tombe, euh, plus personne n'a Twitter. Donc nous, on s'est dit, tenez, on va, tiens, on va faire notre truc à nous, au moins on est tranquille, c'est décentralisé, ça fonctionne. Donc ça s'appelle le statut télécomique, c'est sur le même modèle, en fait. Euh, voilà, on s'échange entre nous et tout le monde est bienvenu. Et euh, donc euh, voilà, bon, ça c'est euh, encore toutes les, les opérations que nous menons actuellement, et celles passées aussi. Donc à Syrie, Libye, euh, Iranian Resource Page, il y a tout plein de choses comme ça. Euh, forcément, ce, ce dont le, nous sommes contre tout ce qui est acte, évidemment, il prède. Je vais passer sur le côté euh, euh, franco-français de la Lopsianopi, tout ça, c'est pas du tout le sujet. Donc euh, voilà. Alors, euh, ça fait souvent peur, hein, le, le terme crypto-munition, tout de suite, euh, ça fait un peu guerrier. Parfois, il y en a besoin quand même, euh, il y a besoin quand même de choses assez compliquées, assez lourdes, qui n'est pas forcément accessible auprès de tout le monde. Donc, on essaye de vulgariser que ce soit accessible au maximum euh, à tout le monde. Voilà pour la présentation à peu près de Télécomix. All right. Um, I knew from beforehand kind of what um, uh, Fou would say, but um, I don't understand the word of French myself. So um, if I duplicate something, my apologies. <laughs> uh, so um, my name is Jonathan Valk, um, mostly in the, the world of telecomics known as Jaywalk. Uh, and uh, come here from Sweden, and um, I'm very pleased to be invited. So thank the organizers for that. Um, If you have any comments or uh, need to contact me later, I will be here the whole day, but um, my, on Twitter, I'm just my last name. Uh, otherwise, um, email me, first name at the last name, dot se. Um, yeah, or of course, use StatusNet, uh, as he showed earlier. earlier. Here's an alternative title for uh, the presentation. Um, How I learned to stop worrying and learn to love the internet, free speech, and freedom of communication. Uh, take your pick or add if you, if you wish. Um, I don't know um, how much uh, full presented of uh, telecomics and uh, what we are. Um, every time someone tries to explain telecomics, it's a different answer. Um, and uh, maybe that's what it is. It is so many different things. But uh, it started uh, with the political actions. Uh, in the European Union and grew with a love for freedom of data um, and today it is what it is. Um, we'll see how much, how confusing this is for you but I don't think it will be a problem. I will not talk that much about telecomics but more about ideas for the future of communication that's grown from it. Um, I thought I'd start with a short interaction because this is terms that we'll get into more Uh, with what uh, the little, a little bit of networks and uh, what networks look like. Here's um, the cl classical centralized model. Um, this is what a web server looks like. Um, everyone connects to a server, they get a reply. Um, today it doesn't really look like this, but it's still quite kind of valid and uh, it's not a model that scales and uh, we've been through this already, uh, but it's the classical model. Um, what we've got with the internet, as it dawned in the 90s, was a decentralized model. Um, this is not uh, a good, good way of showing all decentralized models, but it's kind of the idea. You have, um, still have servers, you still have clients, but uh, you can have many servers. And uh, I mean, uh, if you look from it from the outside, this is what Twitter looks like. That's what StatusNet looks like. Uh, so the decentralization is shown to the user. Uh, Twitter actually looks like this as well, if you look below it, but that's nothing that a user can ever see. Um, and this is also how um, BitTorrent works. It's a, um, with peer-to-peer, -peer, it's actually more like this. That's a peer-to-peer -peer network. Everyone connects to everyone, and it's fully distributed. And this is, um, as I see it, the ideal situation, both for scalability, uh, availability, and performance, for one, but also for distribution of power. In a centralized model, there's only, always one guy deciding. Here, 
um, hopefully, if it's right, implemented in the right way, no one can decide, which I think is a good thing. Um, let's see, but that was just a short introduction. Now, um, the future of communication as I see it. Um, we have, um, at the moment, a movement. Uh, we have the decentralized internet. The internet was grown from an academic basis um, with no centralization of power and decision making. But right now, we're moving more and more towards a centralized model. Uh, and that's uh, not always centralized technologically, but it is centralized when it comes to power. Um, and this is very problematic because um, it's, um, I mean, the internet has uh, got, got us so many great things, and these great platforms, social networking, Twitter, Facebook, are all here because we had the decentralized internet. And um, I'm afraid they are slowly killing the decentralized internet, making it centralized, and, well, uh, cutting the branch that they see on. And also, this, uh, all the good things that I see come out of um, the internet. Uh, and an even, even bigger threat, and uh, uh, I had a, this is my title, I think, is the cloud. Um, the cloud is this right now, and what most people that use this buzzword, they talk about uh, is um, going back 30 years of development, or at least 20. And uh, I hope we don't end up there. <laughs> so, um, the future of communication, as I see it, um, may not all be, all be, but cyberspace. Um, cypherspace is a um, kind of vague term as well, but uh, it is um, the ultimate distributed network. Um, there is, um, you don't need to, you have the decentralized infrastructure of the internet, you can have a layer on top of this that is fully distributed, everyone is on the same level, uh, and also the servers are on the same level. Um, we no, no longer have to have one computer holding all the data and ask that computer for the data, Everyone can hold it together, and you can even use the storage in a distributed way. Um, and this is um, something that, through telecomics, we've um, uh, experimented with a lot. And it's, um, as I see it, a um, better future. Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, but the, I will not talk so much about the technological part, um, about how you implement it, how you use it. Um, I'll just say, I think it's good, and <laughs> people can come with comments. Uh, more importantly, maybe, is what does it achieve? Um, where do we get when we have a level playing field of communication? And um, it leads to social change. Um, when everyone can talk to everyone, and uh, there are basically um, zero delay to talk to anyone on the planet, and you can move vast amounts of data, as we saw earlier, uh, between people, it changes how people communicate, it ch changes how people interact. Um, and with this change comes, uh, maybe here's where, where tele Telecomics has done lots of uh, work, I mean, it's a very social platform. It's um, people meeting, communicating, talking, and it's lead led to political ideas. Is that the political idea of um, uh, well, freedom of communication as, uh, and freedom of speech as so important things for the future. And um, as I said, Telecomics was born with actually the um, uh, Telecommunications Directive in the European Union. And still the main channel is called the Swedish word Telecompaketet, which was the Swedish name for um, this directive. Uh, and um, what have, uh, the main... Um, problem with the European Union um, that I think the internet has really changed was interest. No one, at least from a Swedish perspective, no one really cares what happens in the European Union. I don't know if it's the same here in France, but uh, maybe to some degree, at least compared to what happens closer to you. But uh, the internet shortens distances, and uh, the more you expose and uh, highlight things that happen in the European Union, which I think social media and the internet has been great at doing, things actually do change uh, in the European Union with the Commission and the Parliament, and that's fascinating to see for me. 
And more recently, uh, and uh, what maybe more, most people, if you've heard about telecomics before, has heard about is um, political change in other parts of the world. And that's the Arab Springs, or changes in the Arab world and North Africa, uh, where um, uh, maybe for good and bad, you have had, many have said the internet has been so important, and especially social networking with Twitter and Facebook as something that's really changed how um, I mean, how the political situation is in the whole uh, region. Uh, and I don't know how much you can contribute to the, um, to the uh, internet, but from what it seems, quite a lot. Um, but it is uh, from a centralized model, and especially in Egypt, you can see that uh, centralization has, was a big problem, because when this change was starting to move on, what happened was uh, the simple thing to do you cut off the internet, and people didn't have that channel. And that was doable because you had, well, single points of failures, things that were not decentralized, things that were not distributed. So uh, the more, even if it may seem like a moot point to distribute everything and make everything go out to the clients as much as possible, it's a much more resilient network. And uh, well, maybe, uh, maybe the change would have gone differently if they, it was impossible to shut off the internet which uh, I would see as a great future. Uh, yeah, and what I wanted to, uh, this is um, the future I'd like to see and I see is coming uh, and uh, which we're working towards. Um, but there is also uh, another side of things, I suppose. And the, uh, what I just wrote here is the reverse. And that's where other forces are moving and uh, there you have a big one, uh, ACTA, uh, and um, uh, maybe more familiar names here as Hadoopi and Lopsi uh, are uh, another type of political movement uh, regarding communication and another idea for future communication. Uh, lots of it is driven by copyright and uh, intellectual property. And no matter what you think about intellectual property and copyright, it's a big, proper, big problem when it um, actually tries to kill this platform which is, makes so much political and social change for everyone around, around the world. Uh, and uh, when this, um, I mean, th maybe you can agree that uh, act is needed and counterfeiting is bad, copyright uh, needs to be at some good level, but when you start implant, implant these, these things, you get a social change. And that is you get this platform. And that's, um, Maybe not intended, but even if it's un in unintended, it's, um, I don't think where most people want to end up, but um, uh, another political thing I didn't bring up right now was uh, data retention, uh, which also can sound good, but also drives everything in a direction where, um, well, at least not the future I want to see. Um, let's see. And with the, this, uh, when the, uh, this all is implemented, uh, when you have um, ACTA running, you have um, data retention, you implement all, then the computers don't act like they should do. Um, to, make, to make these policies applicable, you need to change a lot of things, how computers work. Computers are really gigantic calculators that can do anything. Uh, but if you look at a modern smartphone, it isn't anymore. You lock it down to something that is manageable, I mean, centralized manageable model. And when you have that model, um, well, it's not as fun anymore. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, from telecomics, that's the way uh, I would like to see things move in the future. I, I know this was kind of a short presentation. I have lots of areas and things to discuss, but I think that's all for me for now. So thank you all for listening. <laughs>